like a geezer. have any clips prepared uh, for this one because I, I went back and looked at the the shadow movie and uh wow there was no good clips in it <laughs> so <laughs> i'm sure some of you out there really enjoyed it though uh welcome everybody you're watching gray beards studio this is episode 61 if you can believe it and uh this is this is what happens when you let uh kelsey uh decide the uh, the poll topics uh, you get you get madness, and that's what we've got today. This should be a lot of fun and uh, strangely entertaining. At least we can only hope so. Let's bring in the crew and get this show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Fearsome himself, David Williams. Thank you for joining us, David. Appreciate your participation. Um, here's a guy who was on vacation last week, has uh, many stories to regale us, hopefully some of corn dogs, uh, Gary Martin. There he is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Kelsey sent you that already? I uh, know, right? You didn't send me anything. Hmm, I'll have to get to the bottom of that. Welcome back, Gary. As I said in the comments in uh, Twitter, I said we missed your acerbic wit. So uh, hopefully you are prepared today to uh, make up for your absence last I week. I have many, me. many acerbic isms. Excellent. Really? That's what we're here for. Is that uh, Mr. Insanity himself. Uh, but at least he didn't pick manga. It's uh, Kelsey Shannon. There he is. What? I mean, how dare you? That was awesome. <laughs> get, let, me, uh, let me get this focused so you can read. Yeah, if it was in focus, the joke sure. would work better. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. Oh, that's, really <laughs> that's you. That's you screaming and just you raging. Yeah, that would be. Yeah! A good <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good T-shirt. <laughs> Actually, I didn't mind the movie to be honest with you, but uh, I couldn't find I, a clip. I wanted. He pulls out his guns and was like, "That's awesome." Yeah, I know. I wanted a clip of him laughing, and there was clips of him laughing, but not. They didn't show him while he was laughing, and so it didn't really work for me. Oh, I love that shot of him coming out of the shadows. He's like, dun, 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 and he's like, kind of, he's like pinned to the wall with some like knives or something. That movie was great. <laughs> was, uh, to me, it was very well. Dick let's not get carried away. Yeah, um, it was very Dick Tracy esque. You know, Dick Tracy was like, I liked Dick Tracy kind of, but it was like so stylized, it didn't even feel like it was real. It kind of just felt cartoonish. And this, the shadow did. I thought the shadow could have been a little bit more darker, and it felt a little. little it was better too... than the Phantom. Well, <laughs> anybody in purple underwear running around in a long sleeve underwear running around in the jungle, I, I just do not understand that at all. It was better than the spirit. I think the audience no. chose wisely here out of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Well, if you're talking about the other choices, a lot of people were saying they wanted the Phantom. They say that, but then they don't vote for it. So well, we need like a real phantom. This is kind of like uh, you know a gag strip with the phantom. I don't know. I definitely have more uh, ammunition with a with a shadow uh, gag panel uh, than I would. Uh, well, well, anyone know. does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I could have made a sweaty long underwear joke pretty easily with the uh, the phantom. So I oh, that that's true. Pocket. I had that in my back pocket. Um, well, I, I I appreciate not having to draw every week, but especially this week. <laughs> <laughs> You'll still win. If, yeah. <laughs> if it were a competition, which of course it isn't. It but, totally um, is now. Well, it kind of is. Kelsey's sort of backed us into a corner. We're all going to be sort of competing with the same concepts. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any repetition here. Um, but before we do that, let's, uh, let's see who is joining us. 
we always feel that uh, viewer participation is is important to this show. Let's see if we've got actually got some viewers. Uh no. Okay, let's move on then. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they become filing in late. You know, I'll put the free beer sign out in front of my house and maybe we'll get some more. Uh, <laughs> That's what gets me here. Yeah. Well, I know I got to send you that six pack. Um, <laughs> Here in the Steadfast is the first one here today. Thank you for joining us. Toshiro, he says, Charles Atlas course, Roy Rogers horse, and only the shadow knows. Ah, do you remember those? With little uh, little musical notes by it. Um, wow. I remember the Charles Atlas course. I never took it, but I remember in the back of comic books because I didn't want to get sand kicked in my face. And I don't yeah, know I the sand in the yeah, dork's face. Yeah. No. But then he... <laughs> Then he pumped iron and beat the crap out of that guy and stole his girl back. So, you know, it worked out good for him. But he, um, he died of cancer from all the steroids. From all the steroids. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he got well, the yeah. girl. That's all that matters. That's right. And he had his moment in the sun there. So, uh, McGreg uh, Orable is here. Oh, McGreg Orable J. Uh, Zaid Comics is here. Phil the Astro Chimp. Um, Phil the ostrich. <laughs> Merv the ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, they're bleeding it's, into each other. I know. Now. It's all turning this like amalgam thing, you know. <laughs> oh, poor Phil. Uh, the Shadow in the style of Don Martin, says uh, Japanese Balton Saijin. Omer Glitch, Pantheon, Ronin, Bruce Sma Artist. Bruce M.A. Artist. First time being able to join live. Looking forward to another great episode in real time. Well, thanks for joining us, Bruce. That's fantastic. Uh, Greek, <laughs> woo! Greek Avenger, Greek that, Avenger, Greek, Greek wow. Avenger. That's uh, comes after the three hundred movie. Yeah, Greek. I know. We don't want to uh, uh, geek, <laughs> geek Avengers. What I'm trying to say, my goodness, my guilty pleasure is a shadow movie done by Alec Baldwin in the '90s. We we're just ripping on it. They made the mistake of releasing it at the same time as Titanic. <laughs> well. I guess anything would have been a mistake going. This I was a projectionist time. in the theater when that happened, and we we spilled the entire reel of Titanic on the floor. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to tell you that in, in, later. I mean, remember, I rewind it all up to like six hours. We did. It oh, was man. dirty. Oh yeah. Oh, remember no. in Alec Baldwin's Shadow movie when um, he shot that girl? That's my favorite part. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? Why? Too soon. Well, not a... Too soon. Uh, C. Quinn uh, Shildarist is here. Fellow sequential artist here. Glad to join a Greybeard's podcast live for a change. So we have two guys here that aren't normally live. That's excellent. Neil Orr, Sky79, has nothing but love for the shadow. Fox Mulder is here. Tay Tay is a psyop. Of course, we all know that's Angela uh, Curry in her uh, secret name. Uh, Gary Martin's here. Uh, good. It's part of the show. He should be here. 40-year-old Graybeard is here. Uh, Brian Norton, all the way from Japan, has come in. Uh, the Vespa guy is here. Neil Orr, Bibliobob. Yeah, Bibliobob is here. You got the name. Oh, I now did. I, do I the don't super need your help anymore. But then he started spelling it backwards and confused me. So, <laughs> Bibliobib. <laughs> yeah. The no, Vespa guy, H is for heretic. Squibs, iodine 74, cigar gangster is here. Yeah. yeah oh, good one. Dad's Den of Pop Culture, easiest draw stream ever. I mean, who's funnier than The Shadow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guy's all about comedy. Uh, <laughs> Blackjack, DJ Close. Squeaky's here because wherever Geek Avenger is, Squeaky's not far behind. Thomas Ivanko is here. Henry Bemis all the way from Oregon. Pity Ma, Skull Nasher, Playmail, Zombie Chow. The Corn Dog King is back. Welcoming Gary with open arms. <laughs> How did I become the... Corn dog king. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> it was an epic corn tale dog. of corn dogism. Now, that's mm -hmm. my legacy. Blue Boy Comics is here. Uh, let's see who else we got here. 40. Carry the five. Yeah, you're, you're at most like the sheriff of, of corn dogs that's or something. Exactly. <laughs> What's a lesser title? The that's baron right. of corn dogs? The, right. corn dog yeah. baron. Yeah. the deputy of corn dogs. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to cast him as like the Johnny Appleseed of corn dogs. He's that's not right. like going around and, that's but funny. he is kind of, he's kind of like, like Marshall corn dogs and joy. Wherever <laughs> he's more like Marshall corn dog. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brett's oh, that's a great. drawing coming up. Marshall corn dog. <laughs> he's starting that right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. George, uh, George body 90. Bretsky the great. 
Storm D, Citizen Ronan, Kel Razor, the Vespa guy for $5 already right out of the gate. So the Shadow, thank you for that, Vespa. The Shadow would have known that Gary was going to replace Bruce Lee in his book. That was some evil I didn't expect to be lurking in Gary's heart. Um, okay, no. Mm, Time is. out. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. I've been getting a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, I know what Aaron's going to say. What's new? <laughs> exactly. Did you want to finish that statement or but, just yeah, the fact that you're getting a lot of crap? Bruce Lee with, with Gina and my criteria for doing that is not about the deeds or legacy of the character. <laughs> it's about how successful I deem the artwork to be. And I thought the Gina piece was a much better piece of artwork than the Bruce Lee piece. Okay. Not, I was not trying to <laughs> piece merge Bruce's accomplishments. You know. <laughs> Um, yeah. So well, I just when we were talking in the air that I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, but, but that was the reason that Gina's piece, it was much piece of art, was uh, okay. much more successful. That's that's why I did it. There's your explanation, folks. Believe it or not, there it is. Uh, Tagamo Model Works, Michael Bancroft, all the way from Australia. Danger Vanessa's in their house. Uh, Citizen Ron, we already said that, but I'll say it again. Normandy Nerd is here. Um, let's see here. How about Mike Wilkie? Oh, Wilkie. Uh, we never hear from Mike Wilkie, but there he is. Geek Avenger for $2. Thank you, Geek. Someone needs to draw the shadow with the Tolku. See, I don't even think we know. Does anyone know what that is? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that's the uh, the the guy that, that trained him, right? The Tolku? He's oh, the guy. Okay. He's the, uh, Tolku. the sensei, whatever. Right. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. okay. Aviator Surge. Uh, Haven't Reyes. you ever seen the movie? Jeez. Uh, it's been a while. Jimmy Reyes is Not here. Yesterday. Uh, let's see. Who else we got? Oh, Amanda B. throwing money our way. Thank you, Amanda, for $2. Honk, honk, Gary. Hey, guys. Everybody's so glad that Gary's back to regale us with more stories of oh, him, uh, yeah, oppressing some, young liberals. Some stuff. Um, Lord Nemesis Spurge number one is here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay. I think we got everybody. All right. Uh, time for a little bit of show and tell before we get this show on the road. David, yeah, do you have anything you like to Major, major corn dog here. Yeah, there's... yeah look, at, look at that. He whipped that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I had to make sure that you could see the stick. Go yeah, we the bottom because it was getting was a white. little racy. Uh, yeah. Go back on Kelsey. <laughs> Major. Well, yeah, I don't know if a major says 10 hut, but, you know, for a quickie. <laughs> <laughs> Show I don't know what kind of – I was trying desperately not to make this look like a Nazi hat. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> there you go. Got to have some, like, spit coming out. Some, yeah. <laughs> mustard now he, spit. You got to paint him so he's golden brown now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where are my markers at? Maybe we'll do a quickie marker. There you go. Well, uh, let's see what David has to offer us while you are yeah. uh, doing the marker schedule. This is my show and tell for today. That's right. Same stuff. Old got, uh, got the prints to, to, to boring. Right. I mean, <clears throat> I mean. Hey, you colored it. <laughs> oh, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. that. I still love that. That is a great pose. Great color job. I wish I could see more of Kelsey's colors. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's, that's a story for another day. Um, that's fantastic. So I got so David, these, uh, you still have uh, just a few left of these oversized prints. So um, they're thirty dollars each, or four for a hundred. So this was my uh, uh, snake eyes will die for you. You know, uh, <laughs> oh, that's the purple rains. Purple Look rain. at that bike, man. <laughs> Oh, is that uh, who's that chick in the background? What's your name? Baroness. Oh. Baroness, that's right. Purple snake. Purple I'm not a snake. I'm not yeah, right. but, uh, <laughs> I would like to see yeah, this. Very nice. I would like to see this like five seconds later. I want to see Robin's head getting splattered. No, no splattered. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that can be arranged. Let me uh, draw that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, see, he's going to get all the like, gags out of the way before yeah, we yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting warmed up. I don't know, mm-hmm. man. You did like a line of cocaine before you came. <laughs> <laughs> so I can try everything. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to fail miserably on the show. That's why I'm getting all the good stuff on now. That's right. You're trying to build up some goodwill before. Yeah. Uh, love Black Bolt's face. There's some boote there for you. See that? That one, she looks like Gina Carano there. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Gary over here? <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> um, uh, the coloring, uh, uh, the color is brilliant on that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. These are all great, fantastic pieces. Yeah, they sure. Are. Oh, that's uh, like uh, 1966 Iron Man. Yeah. Cool. That's my favorite that's Iron that's Man. That's the Kirby version. I. I don't know Don if Kirby Heck. did that or if that was Don Heck. Don Heck. Oh, Don Heck. I love Don Heck. It's a great piece, though. <clears throat> Bill Sienkiewicz inked this. Crazy. I have no idea who colored it, but they did it. Uh, they did it. That's yeah. color. <laughs> this is, uh, Black Panther. It's a nice one. Classic Wolverine. Was that a cover? Yes. I love that. Love it. Yeah. Even got his chest hairs in there. Little curly <laughs> little. <laughs> Thanks for showing that. Yeah. That's my. Uh, I love Luke Cage when he was, uh, you know, the hero for hire in that that seventies outfit. When they took you know, him out of the seventies outfit, he died to me. Yeah. If only Marvel didn't suck. We could have like a David Williams, Power Man, Iron uh, Fist story. That would have yeah. been fun. So that's a nice combination of uh, David and Kelsey. Now, what's that from? Uh, this was from Suicide Squad. Oh, really? Ah. Look at those, like, uh, Master Chief or whatever those guys are from uh, yeah. Halo, it looks like. These were, like, uh, soldiers from his past coming to haunt him. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh that died on his watch that he has to end up killing again. <laughs> so that flag or whatever his name is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All my knowledge of Suicide Squad comes from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and what you said, that's it. That's the total knowledge. That's it, yeah. <laughs> like, that's all I know. I just said it. Well, I saw the movie while I was working, so I heard some of it. Is that Betty Page as? Yes. Mm-hmm. No, it's not Zatanna. It's just Betty Page as? Yes. It's just Betty Page. Well, it looks like Betty Page is a <laughs> Whichever one won't get you into copyright trouble. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, Citizen Ronan says, David is better than we deserve. Oh, that's so sweet. That's true. Oh, look at that Kirbyism right there. Look at that. Yep. Uh, the story about this, um, they originally offered this to Bruce Tim, and he turned it down, and I was the next <laughs> person in line to get it. So well, like, okay. hey. You know, that's I found David digging in uh, in uh, Bruce Tim's trash. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Yeah, pretty oh, much. That's nice. Look at that. It's a tough angle, but successfully pulled off. I I was I was there when Nova Number One came out, and I thought this is going to be the See, next you, big thing. You made Nova look cool. Yeah, I know. That's what I was going to say. That's, Nova uh, is cool. You don't like Nova? Depends who draws well, him. No yeah, problem. That is true. That's true. <laughs> Nova. <laughs> Eric Larson drawing him? Not so much. But uh, you know, Busema <laughs> or David Williams? Dang, yeah. shots fired. Just saying. I like Busema. But I like Busema on anything. So Yeah, me too. Look at that. You look at it, David. Yeah, like I it. will. <laughs> All right, Kelsey, are you done with that corn dog yet? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just. No, actually, we'll sh- go to Gary. We'll go to Gary first. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, Gary, this is Martha Washington, right? Sure is. Oh, uh, this is just a 
for fun piece. I wanted to catch up with you guys, the Frank Miller theme for last week. Why why you gotta why you gotta win after the fact? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's easy to win after the fact, Gary. It's a, it's a piece <laughs> that I've been wanting to do for a while. I mean, quite a while. I'm a huge Dave Gibbons. Gibbons? Fan. Yeah. Love and Gibbons. um Dave's illustration. This is this is kind of kind of a recreation, although I did make some changes because I blew the figure up. It's on level by 17. You can see it uh, behind me. So my inking is a little more, I don't know, Boland-esque. I just added mm -hmm. more lines. But just everything that Dave put in here, I I just think this is just an amazing illustration. So I've been, like I say, been wanting to recreate it for a long time. Um, very nice. Yeah, there. very cool. We're the uh, John Basima uh, a couple of weeks ago. Wait we a minute. Did you put Biden <laughs> in there? Is that what he did? Who is that? Well, I, I mentioned, is the well, I mentioned nectar in Biden's realm. Kind of looked like <laughs> Biden to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is. That is hilarious. <laughs> you got it. You should have changed that thing in his hand to an ice cream cone. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> It's like spooky looking, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and the uh, the Hulk behind me is a commission. Um, someone had a Dick Cole Hulk pencil uh, oh, piece hold of that up. Ink. I see it. It, I, yeah, hold it up. So I traced it, and this is on. It's twice up, so it's it's, it's large. So this Damn. is me inking uh, Dick Cole Hulk. Trace it. Trace. Look at that butt cheek. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. Go up closer. Wait, go up. Should I? <laughs> well, that was a commission. The 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 Martha Washington was just something I did just to fun. All right. Nice. <laughs> All right, uh, Kelsey, it's show time. Uh oh, okay. Get that I'm almost done here. He's uh, <laughs> coloring it. Get that thing. Yeah, home. I. Uh, he still looks a little too flesh colored for my. I was going to say he's a little fleshy looking. You need to. <laughs> you need focus. to brown him up. <laughs> oh, it is focused. My my internet must be crapping out. Well, oh, you great. know, it's, you're in the bayou. Yeah, it's my bayou internet. But yeah, there we go. Major corn dog uh, come to life. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just a nap. Kelsey won. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. Oh my gosh! Just brown up that uh, that corn dog a little bit though, and uh, before you <laughs> call it good, will you? It's making me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> hey, you should be secure in these things. Uh, yeah, you should, should just put in the word balloon. The corn dog knows. I don't know what's a good corn dog brown. I don't have a. I think that's, I think that's uh, close. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I'd see right. how you're getting there. Yeah, just get, just get away from that fleshy pink color you got going. <laughs> said, quit, said putting, quit, quit putting veins in there. <laughs> <laughs> there we'll, we'll yellow him up a little bit. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's not working. It's not working. Well, you're, just, you're, getting there, you're getting there. Oh, my now God. Now I don't like him spitting. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. It didn't take us but 20 minutes to go completely off the rails. <laughs> Woo! GJ Martinez says, that's the best corn dog I've ever seen. <laughs> that's major corn dog. Well, major, yeah. major corn dog. All right. Well, gosh darn it, Kelsey. That was uh, quite a contribution I wasn't expecting to the show. And uh, All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. Yeah. yeah right. uh, thanks for participating. All right. So now, now I'm going to show you guys some real stuff that I've been, <laughs> please, going crazy on here. All right. So now check this out. I thought I want to kind of play a little bit uh, with check style it. here, and I did this Superman, but I made him kind of bulky and bumpy and um, whoa. That's weird. That's like a. That's almost like a. Who is that guy? David Finch, almost. Yeah, it's kind of Finchy. It's kind of Wrightsony. It's kind I of. I was thinking, yeah, Rice reminds me of Wrightson. Look at that cape. It's just all like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he needs it. Yeah, he needs to iron it. Yeah, 
of course, Mr. Mitchell Pitt looks a little bit. Oh, of yeah, well, yeah, I think he's getting what he deserves. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of was just kind of fooling around. I said, you know, what? I was being really loose with the pencil and kind of bold and I was getting kind of chunky with it. And I was like, man, I really like this. I wonder if I could like move in this direction. Do I have enough guts to do it? But uh, look how uh, we've all we've all been every time you've done like uh, like the chunky inking or anything like that. You've gotten a lot of response, it, it, certainly from us. Uh, I mean, I always like that stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of becoming a bigger fan of it, and uh, it's just kind of like the fear of actually, you know, jumping into the deep end of the pool with something I really haven't done a lot of. But uh, that is so awesome! Yeah. Oh, Please you. wait to to you finish Kit before you start doing the chunk. Yeah, I'm not going to get too crazy. Although I have started incorporating a little bit more uh, fun bumpiness in the capes and stuff. That's the weird thing about Kit Carter. It's supposed to be in space, and everybody's wearing a robe and a cape. I'm not sure what I got going on there. <laughs> That's, I can right. see you bringing back the 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 ultraverse, or is it ultraverse that with Prime? It looks like Prime's body. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, whoa! That's an actual painting. Is that acrylic? That's acrylic, a hundred percent, all the way through and through. We wow. Get your heart out, Joe Jusco. Hey, Joe, Joe said, uh, Aaron. Um, if you really Stop want some good no. advice, give me a call. No, uh, <laughs> very nice to me. Um, but see, I got I got a little chunky in there again, which I really wanted to do. Try and get a little more painterly looking. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what I found out was that this I had used about three colors on his flesh tone, which was um, burnt sienna and, and a mixture of burnt sienna and white, some orange, and then um, uh, some uh, umber and burnt umber and burnt sienna in the shadows but i hadn't really punched up the shadows and man when i went in there and punched up those shadows this thing really came to life mm -hmm. got those darks in there and i did a little oh, bit of isms here i dropped in a little bit of that blue from the background in my dollar the store watercolor kit has a color called flesh tone it works great <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I mean, this ended up <clears throat> taking way longer than I wanted it to because I wasn't uh, really, I didn't have a, I, I didn't do a color sketch or anything. This was the color sketch and it just started turning out and I was like, I've got to finish this. And so I wasn't really sure what I was going to do color wise. So it took me a little bit longer than probably it would have and still trying to figure out how to move the paint. So you can see what I did there in the rocks a little bit here, but I've been yeah. watching oh, yeah. videos and stuff and I went in with. Uh, some violet in here for the shadow. Um, is this all acrylic? What, what did you do? 100% acrylic. That's yeah. all I do. Everything's acrylic on here. Very it's nice. Kind of those painterly strokes there on the, the axe blade. <laughs> oh, that's you got to put, uh, <laughs> put some Chinese red in there for some blood. I know. Well, you know, I almost went in here and dro dropped in some red and orange down here, kind of coming up out off the horizon. But I thought, don't ruin it. It worked with the blue. <laughs> Let's move on to the next project. So uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I like the rust and stuff on the axe blade. That looks great. All the roughness of yep. it. Yep. Thank you. No, yep. I, 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 I'm pleasantly surprised at how well this came out, and it's kind of getting. So me are we? Like if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I figure I can only go up from here, so it's very encouraging. <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, this is the next one on the menu. Ooh. Ooh. And what I did here is I went in and inked it essentially because I've been watching some acrylic videos, and a lot of guys are going in and they're basically will go in and ink the drawing and then paint over it. Which um, I just kind of went in with uh, burnt umber in the shadows um, and just kind of painted it so I wouldn't lose it. I mean, it's obviously it's not really tightly inked or anything. It's just that's acrylic on there. And then I went over it with a, a burnt sienna and then I'm going to start painting it kind of a monochromatic uh, color, like in the Browns, the whole thing will be, and it'll be interesting to see how it comes out, but I'm going to try and do this in about three hours. Now that I, after doing that dark wool thing, I sort of got an idea of how the paint lays and how I want to lay it down and how it works. You should make it like uh like his skin tones in shadow, like it's nighttime and have like a really hard, hot uh, white, yeah, uh, edge light from the moonlight. Well, there. I am. Gonna, or is that I'm sun? Gonna that. I'm going to do that on here. I'm going to I'm going to rim light him right here. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I could kind of like go in and bring in some blues in on this side. Yeah, of yeah. Yeah, experiment um, a little with the flesh tone. Yeah. Stelfreeze used to say he, he wanted to like obliterate flesh tone of any kind. So he's always doing purple or green purple, or right, right. the shadows he does in purple yeah. first. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. Now you got me thinking. Anyway, so that's what, that's what I've been up to while working on Kit Carter. And I'm almost done with page 30, by the way. That'll be done Whoa. today. Shipping out to uh, anchor Matt Ryan. I had a little almost trouble. Halfway. I had a little trouble with Matt because um, it was going well. And then I showed him some of Kelsey's colors and he quit. And I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. No, that's not true because we have, no one's seen any of Kelsey's colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should start <laughs> coloring soon. <laughs> now that you're on page 30, I better get started. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there you go, folks. We are now going to jump right in here and do the shadow as a gag cartoon. Yeah, okay. Gentlemen, ready? Draw. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh, wait a minute. I got to grab my pencil. Do you guys got Trader Joe's over there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Have you so. ever try these like cookies at Trader Joe's? They look like that. They're like wafer like cookies, but they're like dark chocolate. We flew mm. through these in a day. You know? So it's like they only come one cookie per package? No. <laughs> I'm at my last one. I'm like a cracksman trying not to take that one. <laughs> and you don't want to be the guy who eats the last one, right? Yeah. Then it's so like... this is Lacey's Cookies, Dark Chocolate and Almond, Trader Joe's. No Everybody try them. They're so I good. get their, they got like this little pack of like eight brownies and they're sea salt on chocolate brownies. Yeah, I saw those. It's $2.99. Oh, I love those. Uh, Jack in the chat is asking me if I have any Shauna the She Devil pages. I'm um, sorry, those are long gone. That was Galacy, wasn't it? Yep. Ooh, yeah, I saw those as soon as I got them. You got the that was in Marvel Comics Presents, wasn't it? Yes. Th that that story ran with the Barry Smith uh, Wolverine story. Oh, so Weapon X. So you get a little bit of royalties, huh? Yeah, we got some we got some royalties on that. Oh, someday I'll get some of those. I got my my quarterly uh, from Marvel. Did you get one, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah, mine was uh, fourteen dollars. <laughs> I, well, I did a little better than you. I got seventy seven dollars. Hey, that's not bad. Yeah, you buy some bread with that. Go out to dinner for that. Fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> you buy some milk. I can buy some corn dogs for fourteen. Some corn dogs, yeah. Well, you guys all got your incentive checks from this show, though, so, you know. Oh, that's that's right, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, thank you. Yeah. That was great. That was unexpected money. That was very, very well received. Thank you, Aaron. I will I will cease to mock you about how much money you're making on me. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are sharing it, so I appreciate well, it. Well, that was uh, the money from the last two years, so don't get too excited. <laughs> 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 oh, so the next check will be fourteen dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah don't, uh, don't get too excited. Oh. So, where while we're getting started, where the heck were you? Are you ready to tell regale yeah. us the stories of the uh, corn dog festival, or what? Was yeah, it? I have a few. I can I can pepper them through throughout the broadcast. Um, I have a buddy who um, he's the one. Was watching a Super Bowl with his kids, and his his wife told the kids not to root for anyone because <laughs> they didn't know them. You might hurt their feelings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that was the same guy. He he collects uh, vehicles, supercars. Like he'll he'll purchase some special edition Lamborghini and then sell it again six months later and double his wow profit. Yeah, so he he does very well with that. That's his hobby. And so he was buying a, for you motorheads out there, it's a Dodge um, Ram TRX. It's uh, the six liter supercharged, <clears throat> 700 horsepower, it's, it's a beast. Um, he lives in Bend, Oregon, and this vehicle costs him like, like seven or $8,000 less in Montana. And so he was going to drive to uh, Montana, and I, I went with him. So we had a Montana road trip. 
Wow, and exciting. Montana, I've been there a couple of times. Montana is it's like the best and the worst of, of all worlds. <laughs> there's some things in it that are really cool, and there's some things in it that it just makes me scratch my head. Yeah. Um, we, I, I need to give you the backstory. It will be important for <laughs> the last part of this story. <laughs> so I drove from uh, Southwest Washington State, which is just just north of Portland, to um, Redmond, Oregon, which is um, eastern part of Oregon, and that's about a three hour drive met my friend at the airport he had rented a car and so then we drove from there to uh, missoula to pick up the truck and and three hour drive to redmond then an eight hour drive from redmond to missoula spent the night drove back the next day after picking up the truck and montana once we got into montana you're driving down the freeway and you're looking both right and left and as far as the eye can see, I mean, you're literally looking at the horizon and it's just open prairie as far as you can see on both sides with not a single building in sight. I mean, it's just, it, it's almost unreal. It feels like you're in, driving on the moon. I mean, it's just an alien surface. That's how I felt about driving through the middle of the United States up to Chicago. Yeah, it's just like prairie land as far as the eye can see, like oceans. Yeah, I mean that because where we were, you could see the mountains way, way off in the distance, but the horizon just goes forever. And we drive it along, and literally in the middle of nowhere, and a sign will be nailed to a tree near the freeway. Nothing else around. Corn dogs, two miles. <laughs> Hand painted sign. Last corn dog for 10 miles. Yeah. <laughs> right. It says, um, wake up America. It's like, okay, some guy hand painted the sign, drove out here, nailed the sign up. What is he referring to? Is this, this could mean something today because Montana is, is pretty conservative or this could be some hippie <laughs> years ago. <laughs> With the same message, <laughs> and so I'm, you know, I'm perplexed for the next, you know, half hour trying to figure this out. <laughs> like wizard sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, it doesn't take much to, to occupy my mind until we come to another billboard. Um, the truck stops um, compete for business. And so there's a lot of truck stop uh, billboards. And one truck truck stop billboard was claiming, quote, the classiest truck stop in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this I got to see. <laughs> and I think it was Jubits, which I think that's a, um, a chain. Oh, boy. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> what criteria do you have to be to be a classy yeah. <laughs> uh, bathroom. So we down the road. We ended up stopping, and oh, I, used, I used the uh, restroom. In the restroom, there were in the restroom there were two vending machines. There was a, a <laughs> <With> condoms. Uh, <laughs> there was a uh, cologne vending machine. <laughs> and a condom, vending, a condom vending machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So apparently, um, Jupiter's classiest truck stop in the world does not have condom vending machines in their restrooms, and so that, <laughs> that answered my answer my question. Wow. So it doesn't, that. or it does? It does not. It does not. Oh, okay. So that's how they define class. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like how they have the perfume there next to the condoms because you're going to need both. Yeah, right. Or the yeah. uh, cologne, right? Yeah, you need the cologne to get the girl. They need the condoms to keep yourself from getting in trouble. Right. Okay. <laughs> and so this, as we're going into to um, 
Missoula, right outside of Missoula, there's a big billboard uh, that said, properly dispose of animal carcasses. <laughs> <laughs> That's an issue, you know, there. Well, I yeah, I would imagine so. When you're, done with, when you're done with them, you know. Yeah, yeah. apparently. But this was literally, as <laughs> was coming from, you know, ranch land, farmland into the city, that's one of the first billboards that we saw. So I guess <laughs> they don't want your, you know, well, used carcasses littering the streets of, of Missoula. I I can see that. I can see that as being a concern. You know, it's like you go into Alaska and they're like, don't feed the moose. And you're like, what? And it's <laughs> one of those things, you know? Oh, that <laughs> reminds me. There's an amazing um, gift shop in Missoula, and look, look what I scored. Uh oh, Sasquatch. Yes. Look at so, Kelsey. my people. <laughs> do you get any kind of royalty on this? <laughs> Not Kelsey. It's it's about the same I get for Marvel. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> incentive. <laughs> Yeah, never, it's my oh, he's even in the bottom of your cup when you finish drinking your coffee. Never stop believing, Aaron. All that right, just for you. Yeah, that's why I don't show up much, uh, <clears throat> you know, for photo ops because I don't get paid much for it anyway. So, yeah, hey, uh, Phil Diaz for two dollars. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit, which just gave me a great idea for a gag, but uh, no, it's not the one I was doing, so I'm already committed to this other one. So, uh, <laughs> I hope it's not the same one I'm doing. That's all I care about. <laughs> Paul Taylor's correct. He says, Aaron is discontinuing his Bigfoot segment on his show shortly due to lack of new content. I I need uh, I, I, I've farmed just about every video that exists that's ever been taken of Bigfoot. And uh, it's like, uh, I need some new material. I need some new sightings to, uh, we're going to start talking about dinosaurs, I guess. A uh, zombie chow says the cologne is to mask the animal carcass smell. <laughs> <laughs> they need something. Yeah, they oh. did say dispose of your used ones. I mean, what do they do? What about the unused ones, right? <laughs> I love that they had to um, qualify it, animal carcasses. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what we don't want to know what you're doing to human ones. <laughs> Well, that goes on saying, yeah, you, you know, yeah, you don't want to. They had to slip in animal. They couldn't just say carcasses. Yes. All but right. I, I guess it was Portland. It wouldn't say animal. I need, uh, I need some opinion here. I was uh, <clears throat> watching. Oh, actually, before we get into that, let me tell a horror story. So, <clears throat> to refresh, you said horror. Huh? You said horror. Horror. Okay. <laughs> all right. Horror. Horror. Okay. Once again, we all, the, the painting I showed you, right, of uh, Dark Wolf, right? So imagine this 85% done sitting right here on this table. The table's flat. There's this huge jug of water sitting right here. And I would pull, I have the spotlight <laughs> and it's on its own stand, but it's not really balanced all that well. Yeah, so, I can see where this is going. Oh, it, it, you, oh. So I have it sitting <laughs> over here, and I'm like, I want to get some light coming in from the left side, right? So I'm not, um, you know, working in my own shadow. And I grab the cord to plug it in, which gives the lamp a little bit of a tug, just enough. The lamp falls over perfectly, hits the jug, this enormous thing of water. It spills all over my table. This painting was completely submerged in water. And for that first five seconds, I lost my mind. I was like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> and I realized it was acrylics, which once they dry are you know, waterproof. So I picked this thing up. It was just soaking wet, just dripping like, you know, like tissue paper. Went over and set it on someplace to dry. And it actually dried flat. So it actually helped. But um there's also flat files underneath this this drawing table right here. So this water is pouring on my flat files. It's all over the floor. Oh my gosh, what a freaking nightmare! But I did get it cleaned <laughs> up. And nothing was uh, 
permanently damaged. The, the beauty of acrylics. Oh my gosh! If that had been a watercolor painting, I would be. I would have killed myself. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been. It would have been done. Oh, actually, it would have been uh, Jackson Jackson Pollock. Uh, yeah. Well, it would have been a lot more funny. Uh, yeah, it would have. Right in retrospect, maybe. Uh, <laughs> as you were laughing about my demise, uh, Sean <laughs> Allen says I'm still pissed. Aaron called Stephen King a hack. Um, <laughs> did I? yeah, I pretty much did. And I'm standing by it. So <clears throat> there you go. Dang. That's not to say you can't love a hack. I'm just saying that uh, I don't. I've never been into uh, King uh, Stephen King stuff, but I, I saw this video on uh, how all of his stories like combined or like they're all like interconnected in the you know the Dark Tower kind of universe. And I thought that was kind of neat. Well, but he didn't do that on purpose, like, or he did it like over time, like he didn't like intend to do that from the start or whatever. I just any book of his that I've read, I've only tried to read a couple. I just couldn't get through. I get about halfway through, and I was just like, Ugh. so. Uh, Cujo was the last book of his that I tried to read, and that was like a long time ago when I was still reading. I don't, I don't read anymore. I just look at pictures and then move on. <laughs> so. I don't think I've, I've even watched a Stephen <clears throat> King film. All the way through. Well, here's a question for a movie I know all you guys have seen. And if I just piss people off with the Stephen King comment, wait till you hear what I'm about to say about this. Um, <laughs> you guys have all seen um, 2001, right? Yeah. Yes. How much did you hate it? Uh, I, <laughs> well, I hated it when I, was, when I was a kid because I had no idea what was going on. Um, now as an adult, I have no idea what's going on, but I have a little better idea of what's going on. Um, so, but here's the thing, the, for my money, the best, the best part of the movie is the monkey guys in the beginning. <laughs> the part of, the movie. of course you think that's the best part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but okay. Just hear me out of this. So. <laughs> you never get the sense when you're watching that film, and I get it, the special effects were groundbreaking and it was cool and all that kind of stuff. But as the beginning, the first like 30 minutes of that film, like some of the most self-indulgent filmmaking you've ever seen in your life, it's like, how many shots of this spaceship spinning do I need to see before you would move <laughs> the plot forward? One more. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so. I don't know. Did that ever? I mean, that's always bugged me when I was a kid. It bugged me. I was like, "Can we? Can we get this moving, please?" Aaron, it wasn't about the spaceships. It was about the music. <laughs> well, there is that too. Is I kind of sat there as I was watching it, thinking, "Is he just has to get through this song, and he's not going to cut the song, the music short? So he's just going to show us <laughs> endless, know. endless shots of you know spaceships well, or the all time classical music greats." You reduce it to this song. <laughs> are you talking about Legellis? Like, what are you talking about? Oh, the original. Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about the band. I like the uh, disco version. <laughs> we can relate to that. I just, I don't know. I just kind of felt like, man, if he'd like clip this by about 15 minutes, this thing would really be moving right now. Well, I mean, it was it, the whole that movie was made before we even went to space. So the whole yeah, point right. of it was to show a very realistic portrayal of space travel or what space travel might be. Right, and it was pretty accurate. Yeah, they even they even had uh, 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 matte paintings of the of the uh, Earth from orbit. Before we even realized what it looked like, mm -hmm. we've never even seen it from yeah. out there. Yeah, that's a no. I'm not. I'm not. I, the visual effects were incredible. I'm not saying that. I just felt like. In other words, you're wrong. Just, no. Just, <laughs> you know, just filmically speaking, I was kind of like, man, get this thing moving, dude. And <laughs> uh, and I also this needs warp drive like badly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are they going yeah, to invent yeah. warp drive? And they need to slingshot around the sun to go back in time. And come on. Um, and then I thought, I thought there was some really interesting moments where he chose not to use music for dramatic effect. And I wasn't sure if it was genius 
or a mistake. Are you talking about where it's just hearing the breathing? The well, you know when he's going into like the uh, he the whole thing where Hal goes nuts and <clears throat> he's got him trapped outside the ship <clears throat> and he won't let him in. And then when you know you would think there's a moment there where and maybe it's too predictable and that's why he didn't do it, but when Hal says something like you know, this conversation, I'm ending this conversation. There's, there's no point to it, whatever. And he just goes silent and you want to, dun, dun, you know, and you're like, <laughs> now he's, and then he, he gets inside the ship and he's trying to, uh, you know, unplug Hal and Hal's like, what are you doing, Dave? Dave, I think you owe me an explanation. What are you doing? I'm afraid, Dave. I just thought, man, some really kind of like low, you know, sort of intense music might really help push this, uh the drama here but then i can also i guess from a standpoint see why he might want it just that kind of isolation and just you're it's you and the elements you know that are involved in the scene and nothing else uh because it did give it kind of this really sort of uneasy sort of spookiness when there was no music and it was just like but i i i wondered he's like all over the symphony at the beginning of the thing and can't cut away because the music's so great and then he doesn't use music the rest of the movie practically. I so uh, might be able to like do an edit. Uh, that would be funny to see, like do an edit where I, I take some like modern action movie music, put it over the top of Dave, Dave. Like take the diehard music and put it over. That would be perfect. <laughs> uh, Rand Arrington says, so I missed the beginning. Does A.A. Ron hate The Shadow 2? He hates pretty much everything else. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I love The Shadow. In fact, he, likes I, the, he likes the ones that he watched when he was a kid, the old radio dramas. I do. I love those. <laughs> yeah, you guys have no appreciation. I've never heard of I mean, the, the first time I ever ran across The Shadow was... Uh, was the Michael Kaluta covers and stuff for uh, not even the first series that he did where he was doing the interiors as well. It was the Dark Horse stuff. And I was just never seen, seen the, anything like it. It was astonishing. You seen the, the Storenko covers? No, I had not seen anything at that point. Because like when that was probably like 90s when the, that's right when I was getting into, really into comics, I think when, uh, Kaluta was doing that that run for Dark Horse. Um, pretty sure that was in the late nineties, mid mid to late nineties, maybe. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe early nineties. Oh. Paul well, Taylor that... says, "Shouldn't Aaron dominate this competition because of Wraith of God?" I, he should. I, I certainly draw a lot of uh, flowing cloaks. That's for sure. Um, I. And it was a gag strip too. It was hilarious. <laughs> Would have been great <laughs> if only. Um, no, you know, I I found it kind of interesting that because you guys know, and, and of course Gary did the rights and shadow piece. R rights was originally going to do the DC series, <clears throat> and then I believe he, I believe he did Swamp Thing instead or something like that, he, he, or mm. which was probably a good choice. But um, and, but Kaluta did some really nice work in that. And uh, what that graph? Here's here's a little bit of tidbit knowledge for you. Did you know that graphic novel that he did, that um, uh, Kaluta did in the God was it the 80s? Yeah, the mid 80s, later 80s. You guys know what I'm talking about? The hardcover yeah. graphic novel. I think he did it for DC. Oh, of the Shadow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, I'll let me grab it. I've got it here someplace. Yeah, I had a great. I remember the painted cover of his face. Uh, While you're looking, Geek Avenger says Arthur C. Clarke moved to Sri Lanka because he was a degenerate weirdo. There you go. <laughs> so what does that say about Sri Lanka? Uh, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> a, haven, a haven for, you know. All right. Okay, here's the graphic novel of which I speak. I yeah, do, yeah. I do not remember that. I remember okay. the, the lighting on his face was really tripping me out. I love okay, that. but here's the, here's the thing. You know who originally was supposed to do this? Richard Corbin. I don't know. Dave Stevens. What? Oh, man. 
And you know why he didn't do it? Because it would have taken 20 years? No, well, that's maybe. But uh, because he was in the middle of a lawsuit with Marvel over the Rocketeer, and he didn't think that it would be in his best interest to be working for the company that was suing him. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, hmm. But, yeah, so that that's kind of funny. That was originally who was going to do it. But can you imagine if Dave Stevens had done that? I know. Yeah, Mar Marvel wins again. You yeah, guys. Yeah. yeah. He's a I, monster. Uh, says I dressed. He's a monster. Says I dressed up in, as the shadow one year in the hood for Halloween, and everybody <laughs> was asking me if if he was a cowboy. <laughs> Yo, man, you a cowboy? You <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> Scott B says, "Are we talking about the TV show, The White Shadow?" <laughs> I love that show. Yeah, what was that? that? Was awesome. <laughs> what was the White Shadow? He was this white basketball coach, and uh, in the inner city, and uh, he was like a former NBA player that got hurt, and so he uh, he took up this high school coaching job in the inner city. So his whole team was black. And uh, he had the, you know, he was like the white coach in this kind of. When was that? What year was was this? The seventies or something? When? Probably late seventies, yeah. early eighties. Probably, probably seventies. But I, I remember the stupidest uh, episode was one of his players uh, wanted to be an artist, and one of the teachers was like, you know she was trying to get him that old story about, you know, you need to focus on your academics, not sports. Cause you have a real gift kind of thing. Right. Mm. And the thing is, it was like, he, she was talking to the coach going, he has a real shot to make it as an artist. I'm like, he has a better chance of making it in the NBA than he does as an artist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's when I was a kid money, and I knew that. And I knew that as a kid. And make, so I was like, yeah, exactly. Test, so, chip. Test chip says Aaron should draw the shadow in manga style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Speaking yeah. of that, I was oh, here to show you something. Let me go yeah. get it. The here Vespa guy right for back. five bucks says Dave Stevens' estate is still selling a few things from his collection. I met his sister actually and uh, got some tidbits from her, some like collector coins and stuff. They're really cool. Um, collection on eBay, mostly prints and a couple of trades. No original art though. Now, all the good stuff is gone, I'm sure, at this point. Uh, that's going to be gone. Well, anyway. I saw her at a con um, not that long ago maybe two years ago, and she had a ton of Dave's original art. And I'm sure it was, she wasn't giving it away. No, she wasn't selling it. She was just... Oh, you're just showing it? Yeah. Oh, that'd been cool. Wanted to show Aaron my latest purchase of the uh, oh, boy. Batman. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look how wonderful. Wow. I mean, he fights wrestlers. He fights... Uh, in the yeah. 60s. Yeah, yeah, this this series is freaking great, and I love the little uh, color, the little Dude. color bits are like awesome. Look at Wait that, a minute, like a ray gun. Wait a minute. Quote: He fights wrestlers. This comic is great. He, he also fights a wrestler. Look at that. Look at. Uh, look at him get thrown. <laughs> I mean, that could be Bane. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the one thing that sucks about this is that Japan has like some of the best printing on earth like they they put yeah, these yeah. little tanko bonds and they cr perfect crisp line work yeah this is bigger than your average uh japanese comic uh the collections and the line art is just awful i mean the printing in this let's see if i can get a good example no, you I, can't I, even I, see yeah. how yeah that's that that's terrible that arm is broken <laughs> was that, that arm yeah <laughs> yeah check out these shoulder blades if you think that's great look at that <laughs> <laughs> it's not so a like, <laughs> not not only is it like chunky like it'd been scanned from the old uh uh what do you call those collections that are on really new crappy newsprint uh real cheap magazines right. uh, phone books that they put out uh, but it's also digitized. So I'm yeah. seeing pixels and bad scanned line art. So, yeah. I mean, and this is from I DC. Enough. Huh. Well, I bought it. It was I bought it for like five bucks. Uh, you know, you, you get these for cheap the bookstores alone, online. Probably. I mean, look at this guy. I don't even know what this guy's all about, yeah. but I'm here for it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel 
like this is my home. It's like something <laughs> on a Hellraiser. <laughs> oh. There you go. I just thought I'd uh, share that with you. I'm wa I'm waiting on my uh, my shadow manga. Oh. <sighs> Zay Comics says Strickle was friends with the creator of the Shadow and turned down the opportunity uh, to do the Shadow series at DC due to their blatant defense of Bob Kane's treatment of Bill Finger. Whoa, good for him. Well, we all know that uh, we all know that uh, Stranko bitch slapped Bob Kane, so <laughs> yeah, he wasn't a yeah, fan. That's he was legendary a... story. Mm -hmm. uh, if he doesn't tell him, to, uh, so, doesn't say so himself. Yeah, <laughs> it is a great story. Whether it's true or not, who cares? When you got to get yeah, you just. What was that the what's the old saying from uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance? If the print the legend, yeah. that's right. If the the legend's better than the the yeah. truth, print the legend or something. I just watched that movie two nights ago. A good flick. Yeah, it oh, is. Yeah. Yep. Packed with legends <clears throat> of the old west. Henry Bemis, good question, Henry. How's the art book coming along? It's still at the printer. I've had having some issues with the printer, but. Oh no! I should be getting the proofs uh, any day now. So we are, the light is is shining some, somewhere in the tunnel or what, however that. <laughs> the light is there. Something's happening. Yeah, yeah however that happen. saying goes. There's know, some so light yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. There's some light. Yeah. Yeah. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, Gary. That's what we're. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. So I, 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 as I was saying, it's like, what does a tunnel have to do with my art book? Did you, uh, are you having to wait for Chinese New Year? Was that part of it? Because that, that's no, one of the things I that's holding me up. I'm using an American. Uh, oh, good for you. You, you commie swan. He's all, all, I'm all American. <laughs> that's from all the Star Trek I watched. I can't, you know, communism. <laughs> yeah, Geek Avenger. Aaron, please get the cannon ready. Geek Avenger says it's the curse of Bruce Lee. Okay. Oh. This is. Um... <laughs> I am never going to live that down. Never. Okay, I vow. This is it's on record because this is being taped. From now on, if if I do another art book, I will include Bruce Lee. Well, geek, I'm sorry, but I got to defend Gary once in a while. So you <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. A little oh, special yes. treatment there, just for you. Um, I'm gonna. You know what? I, I keep I keep forgetting to do this every year. Uh, every year, <laughs> every Ooh. week, I forget to do this. But I, everybody's got uh, some campaigns that are still active. I'm gonna go through real quickly and uh, promote everybody, and then we'll get back to uh, uh, nonsensical conversation that uh, thrilled you all. Um, first of all, let's talk about me. Uh, <laughs> Your favorite topic. It well, is. Well, it, you know, it's his show. That's right. Uh, I'm hosting. That's all. Okay. So, Kit Carter, Planet Doom graphic novel. You guys find the link in the description of this video. I'll take you right to this campaign. It's 64 page graphic novel, eight and a half by 11. So, it's a little bit oversized, kind of like the uh, graphic novels from the 1980s that Marvel used to give us back in the good old days. Uh, full color, too. And, um, uh, or so Kelsey keeps telling me. <laughs> Now in color. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now in color. Uh, we have the hardcover. That's right there. That comes signed in number limited edition with some extra goodies in it. Uh, this is the soft cover, which does not come signed in number, but has the same story in it. Um, here's some uh, here's some of Kelsey's wonderful colors over pencils and inks by me and Matt Ryan. You know, there's a Dan Lawless back cover image. Very uh, saucy by Dan. Uh, Gary will be in the art gallery in the uh, hardcover only. Um, they're saucy Kelsey, enough. Kelsey's yeah. awesome coloring. Yes, very nice coloring by Kelsey Shannon. Uh, I'd like to see more of that. And uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> we have uh, we have t-shirts. You can get black or teal. We got the sketchbook, which is also eight and a half by eleven, and the movie poster, which I am prepping for right now. I'll be doing all this crazy painting before I start the movie poster, which uh, we'll be starting. I was going to start it last month, but I started the prep work this month and. I'm going to be laying paint on this thing sometime this month, and I'll be doing short videos about That's it. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. The um, painting. Hey, there's another. There's another live stream show, laying paint. Yeah. Ooh. 
Uh, got all these add-ons you can get to, like uh, Blood Hunters if you missed that, or if you missed the first issue of Wraith of God, you can get it right there. The second printing, you can get Garbage Man, Power Cube, all that good stuff. Follow the link, back the campaign, make us all happy. Thank you for your participation and your time. Uh, here's another guy we like to call David Williams. He's got something going with Ethan Van Scriber, and uh, it's called... I, I don't yeah, know. What's it called? Oh, there. <laughs> there it is. Fearsome. It's the preview book. Um, this has 11 pages, correct, David? Yep. Of uh, the Fearsome comic, the first 11 pages. Plus, the bonus thing about this is it has all of uh, David's uh, like prelims, prelims, and roughs, and things like that. And it's you, it's, uh, you get half favorite. the story, but you also get. Uh, behind the scenes stuff, which makes this sort of collectible and cool. And my understanding is this is going to be print to order. So that's not going to be like very readily available after it goes to press. So you guys get in there and back this. If you want to see all that extra David stuff. That you How much longer is this do. campaign going? Does it say? Uh, it's in demand right now, I think. Okay. Well, let's see. It's up to almost 65. Wow. Yeah. So it's in demand right now. And I think it's David's done with his, what his contribution to this is. So it's all getting colored and lettered. Are you and all David, drawing it? Uh, I just got a few more pages for the full yeah, book. But, yeah, for the full book. But what's going to be used in this preview book, he's done. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you guys find the link in the description of the video. Take you right there. You want to check that out and uh, back that if you haven't done it, because it will be a hot collectible item. Um, also... Our uh, good friend Kelsey Shannon <clears throat> has a book called Scribbles, Scribbly Bob. There it is. Uh, it's a whopping 5,000 pages now. It's, really, it's like the Encyclopedia Britannica of Kelsey's sketches. Yeah, and much like your coloring, I'm working on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Almost. <laughs> you need I'll a almost wrap talk. this up. Um, you need actually, a talk to accept delivery of this book. Huh? I said, if you, to accept delivery of the book, you need a loading dock. Yeah, loading dock and a forklift. Um, I'm actually wanting to uh, talk. Uh, we got a sign up now for the uh, um, for Nexus uh, Scourge, and I don't know what that is. Maybe somebody in the chat has the sign up, but uh, they're uh, we're starting the the ball rolling on that, or at least uh, Mr. Mike Barron is. So uh, that one's going to be rolling out soon so please sign up for that one i think there might be extras you can get I, i'm not really sure but <laughs> not uh, not really aware of what's going on in the book you're working i'm on. not i yeah, yeah. I, I just draw <laughs> draw and color like a madman and hopefully yeah, I, everybody will pick up the slack for me definitely looking forward to nexus uh kelsey i as you know i am a nexus aficionado i know and there's been a lot of uh, artists attempt to do Nexus besides Steve. You're the only one that I that I really wanted to wanted to see. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah at the, I've done uh, at this point. I've done. Uh, let's see. This this one is um, 40, 48 pages, I believe. And then the one I'm wrapping up now is uh, sixty four pages. And uh, we're also uh, doing a. Uh, a, a release of the very, very first series that they did that was always in black and white. And we're going to be doing that in color. So that, but that's you, coming up. Coloring that? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and that's why I'm late on uh, on co <laughs> coloring kick <Kit> Carter. <laughs> no, 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 not really. He's it's not good. late, folks. He's not late. Don't be alarmed. He's doing fine. Oh, uh, Aaron, Aaron, I know you missed this. <laughs> oh. People, actually, people in the chat were the ones who missed it last week. They're like, "Where's the sound effects?" Yeah, you've got you've got two. I said the sound effects are in Corn Dog Heaven. Yes, in sir, yeah. But anyway, uh, I'll get to it in just a sec. But uh, yeah, so this is all of uh, like layouts from your some story art, some sketches, just a whole bunch of different things. Process art looks like a heck of a lot of fun. It'll come. Uh, Smelling of uh, cigarettes and uh, <laughs> no, somebody else will be uh, 
distributing it for me. So hopefully it will not smell like cigarettes. It'll smell like cigarettes, uh, you know, what do you call it? By uh, osmosis? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're putting that sucker together. So you're, uh, you're well on your way. Yeah, it's put together. It's uh, waiting on uh, Chinese New Year, and I had some issues uh, with uh, who I wanted to distribute, but all that's taken care of, and, and now I think it's uh, it's on its way, and I probably should do an update. People I hear that that's a thing people do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's on um, that's on Fund My Comic, by the way, not an ego. Yes, sir. The link is in the description of this video, so it'll take you right there if you want to go check out the, any of those campaigns that I just plugged. And that has been your public service announcement for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get the uh, the chat the super chats? I quit pushing me, Gary. <laughs> you got work to do, pal. You're, you're right. Push. You know, yeah. we just get back, and now he's like throwing his weight around. Yeah, well, I missed uh, you, Gary. I missed you. Now that I get a piece of the action, you know. Yeah, he's like, he's really pushing it now. <laughs> uh, good job. So he says, uh, the Vespa guy for $5. There's still time to correct your mistake in removing Bruce Lee then, Gary. Holy I take God. it back. Uh, will I not regret make... pushing the super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Can Gary squeeze in one more page? Uh, Paul Taylor, Canadian, $10. Thank you, Paul. He says, I'm surprised you don't like 2000. I didn't say I didn't like it, Paul. <laughs> Not what I said. He said he hates it. I didn't say that. It I has Gary Lockwood that. in it before he got fat, like <laughs> as he was in the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> he did do a guest episode on the streets of San Francisco. Uh, Gary Lockwood was in Where No Man Has Gone Before, my favorite uh, original Trek episode. He is correct. Uh, that was a good one. That was the original pilot. And then, uh, well, actually, it was the second pilot they shot. <laughs> Because the first one had um, that dude from uh, that movie. And, uh, uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. He's not, well, you know the guy, the guy. No, he, that's um, my favorite film. Jeffrey, <laughs> Jeffrey Hunter uh, was in the original pilot with Captain Pike, and they and they turned that into the Butthead episode. If you remember those aliens with the big bald heads. Uh, yeah. And heads. Tell us more about that episode, Eric. Well, there was these aliens who had buttheads. <laughs> and. And they were all veiny. <laughs> That's all I remember as a kid going, what is going on here? The infamous um, butthead episode. I said, Mom, why do those people have butt Sounds familiar. Yeah, corn dog guy. Yeah. <laughs> I need to put a little neck vein because uh, he's oh. yelling. No. I, don't know. I, I look at I do like 2001. I just think that there's some interesting choices that were made in it that I just uh, – Bug me. That's that you hate. You hate some of the choices. Yes. And, uh, you know, unlike Jaws, which I find to be the perfect movie, uh, I don't think that. Uh, well, at least 2001, you get their spaceships to work. I mean, Jaws, my problem with Jaws, not enough shark. Yeah, you know, well, the shark didn't work. So that made it a great <laughs> film. It turned it into a Hitchcock film instead yeah, of. I agree. There should have been more shark. Needed yeah. more action music, too. Uh, no, you got me uh, thinking of. <laughs> uh, see, you guys are just see. You just don't understand where I'm coming from. I have a uh, my uh, my understanding of the cinema. So what you're saying is we 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 don't have the eyes to see your genius. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's pretty much what I'm trying to say without saying it. But you bother me. Yeah. <laughs> all right, just exactly what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I tell people all that all the time. You don't have the eyes. <laughs> see my genius. If only you had the eyes to see. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what I'm talking about, but I. If you could up. only see what I see, <laughs> know what I know, things would be different. Yeah, then I'd show you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right after they kick sand in his face. <laughs> yeah, and then he got yeah. the Joe Weeder stuff from the yeah. comic. Ah. Uh, uh, he's a monster says I see near genius Aaron Stephen King is overrated somebody <laughs> read the last couple chapters of the book and explain that well we were <laughs> talking about that last night a little bit on the professionals that he's sort of like 
always starts out strong and then sort of seems like he gets bored by the end of his book and it's kind of like yeah whatever no oh, we were enough to know because like i said i've only read like tried to read a couple of his books so weren't, weren't we talking about like his movies you said something <laughs> about it or no no it was uh gary said he'd never seen any uh any of his movies? Have you never seen, uh, speaking of Kubrick, I mean, he did one of the best, I mean, not according to Stephen King, but right, one of the best about... Stephen King adaptations. I'm sorry, go ahead. Which one? Uh, oh. Yeah, the, the Shining, right? Oh, right. Oh, okay. Well, if you credit that as a Stephen King film, I have watched that all the time. Uh, the best Stephen King movie, the one that he hates the most. <laughs> yeah, I heard he likes it now again. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah, now that he's had a couple other stinkers out there, it's like, this ain't, it wasn't so bad, I guess. Yeah, you go, yeah, after all, this is pretty good after all I think about it compared to this other <laughs> There was, yeah, there was a lot of weird stuff in that film, but there were, there are also some iconic scenes that, that, will last for eternity. I wonder if Kubrick was like too smart for himself. You know what I mean? Instead of uh, <laughs> that's what know, I like, say about me. The, the whole too smart for myself. Well, no, it's the whole understanding of his, you know, his, his own genius. Right. But I guess, uh, I don't know. I mean, I thought the shining was weird. I mean, I don't know if it was really <laughs> scary, but it was weird. So I guess it that was, yeah, was weird. Um, and maybe it was just over my head again, but it wasn't one of my favorite flicks. My favorite uh, actor and portrayal in that film was Scott Man Crothers. Oh, he was great. <laughs> and I love his taste in uh, wall art, too. That was brilliant. <laughs> they cut to, I love it when they cut to him laying in bed watching the movies and the camera's slowly pulling back. And then you just see this, like, this nude black black velvet painting of a woman with an afro, giant afro it just yeah. hanging above his bed which just yeah. makes me laugh every yeah. time i see it <laughs> scat man yeah. i wonder if that was his choice that's you know? what i'm saying yeah who decided <laughs> to put that up there i <laughs> like i liked him in hong kong fooey better uh, yeah <laughs> or as various transformer characters or uh what else he's been in everything yeah, he's a great voice actor. Um, Him and Casey Kasem. Yes. <laughs> he did Shaggy, among others. Yeah. Zoinks! <laughs> Scoob! Um, Scoob! <laughs> now, here's here's an interesting review. I, I vividly remember that Mike uh, Clark from USA Today used to be the movie critic back in the 80s for... Uh, the paper, <clears throat> the USA Today paper, he described Full Metal Jacket this way. He said, now, it's weird how I remember like some quotes like this, but he said, Full Metal Jacket, the, he said, the first half of Full Metal Jacket is a perfect movie, and then it slowly degenerates into one of the greatest films ever made. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's weird, but the more I think about it, if you watch that movie, it's like the first it's it's two it's two parts it's it's boot camp and then when they're in vietnam yeah and the boot camp portion is so freaking intense and so nuts that there's no way the second half of the film can live up to it and it doesn't but it's still really good so I thought that's a that's a really sort of crazy way to describe that film, but it, it's sort of apt, I thought. And that's kind of Kubrick, you know. He's kind of like he's kind of like Orson Welles. It's like he's almost always right on the verge of doing something brilliant, and then just never quite does it. <laughs> in my, uh, in yeah, my, that's debatable. <laughs> in my, in my <clears throat> opinion, what do you what do you think about uh, what, what's the um, the one with the droogs? Um, Clockwork Orange. That wasn't Clockwork cool. Orange. What do yeah, you think of that? Wasn't it? Uh, uh, I, I, dude, that is the most. That movie's hard to watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, what What about Barry Lyndon? I I've never seen Barry Lyndon, but I hear it's. I I'm not a big Ryan O'Neill fan, but uh, <laughs> I I have not seen it. But then you might like it if you don't. Yeah, if you're not a fan say, of him. Then, yeah, he's he he does not come off as sympathetic and yeah. Place. Well, he, 
I, I found it interesting that he shot that all all with natural light and candlelight, which I thought was really kind of cool. And I thought Spartacus was great. I love Spartacus. Yeah, Spartacus. Well, he, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, um, I, I remember seeing somebody describe Spartacus as uh, the the only movie of that time that was completely devoid of Christianity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because it's true because they talk about it, it's it takes place all in this time period uh, or around, but there's like no, you know, no talk of Christianity at all. It's all about like the goodness of your your own spirit and things like that or whatever <laughs> the human being uh, uh, there therein lies cube kubrick's form speaking of of spartacus uh, i have a question for david david do you like clams what, <laughs> what a question <laughs> that's a little private yeah i don't know that that's really appropriate <laughs> no <laughs> never mind <laughs> you like gladiator movies too? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, there you go. All right, let me let me uh finish my my uh saga of Montana. Oh, there's oh. more. So we take the eight hour drive from Montana back to uh Redmond, Oregon, drops me off at the Redmond airport where i had my car parked in the long-term parking lot you're really on an eight hour uh road trip you kind of spread your stuff out so i had you know snacks and uh, drinks and and pillows and and you know all the the stuff that you bring with you at a long trip so i gather all my stuff okay see you later thanks you know blah 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 get in my car start it up uh, my friend drives off and um i reach for my phone to do the the nav to get home i left my phone in his car oh no <laughs> oh, he's already he's gone, he's Long gone. gone so he's got a uh about a 45 minute drive back to ben from, from where we are and i'm thinking okay what are my options here? One, I don't have his phone number. Oh. <laughs> well, even if I would have walked into the airport and borrowed a phone or somehow got a phone, I couldn't call him. His number was in your phone. The number was in the phone. Two, <laughs> um, I've been to his house a couple of times, but I don't remember how to get there, or and I don't have his address. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, Maybe I can drive home and then somehow contact him, you know, message him or, or, you know, something, and he can ship me my phone back, which would, you know, that whole process is going to take a couple of days. I'll be without a phone. Dang it. You know, that's not what I said, but <laughs> it. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to have my phone for a couple of days. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. Dang it. Oh, by the way, I've got a three-hour drive back to my hometown. I don't know how to get there without my nav. You can't, oh, wait a minute. You can't get from Redmond to Vancouver. Come on, Gary. I don't. I was using my nav. I, I had not looked at a map. There's only like one bridge that goes over the river there. Hang on, hang on. Well, it's a three-hour. All you have to do is get on I-5 and go north. Come on. Man, I five is nowhere man. near Redmond. <laughs> nowhere near. Well, you just get to. It's I all five. yeah, 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 Aaron. Yeah, it's all back roads and, and <laughs> going over uh, past uh, Mount Hood, and I mean, it's it's not as easy as you think. When you say but past Mount Hood, did like, you say yeah. no? Red, Mount Hood. Just keep Mount Hood to the right, and you'll be okay. Oh, right? Exactly. Oh. How do I get home <laughs> without my nav? Well, maybe I can like go to town. And and find a gas station or something and buy a map. Yeah, and do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. That's like, well, if they even sell maps <laughs> nowadays, I still have a map go from yeah. like ninety. Do they even sell maps at gas stations? I don't know. I haven't. Yeah, I, I exactly. Know. And that made me realize how much 
I depend on that dang phone. It has all my information in it. It's like without it, I'm completely lost. What have I, you know, got myself into depending on this device? How could I have preempted this disaster by having a, a library of, of state maps to be able to get around if something like this happened? It's called a MAPSCO. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm hoping that gas stations have maps. And, and once I get a map, then I'll be able to get home, contact him, get my phone in a couple of days. That's the best plan I can come up with. And I just realized, okay, I've officially ruined this fun trip. <laughs> and just as I had that thought, my friend drives up and says, you forgot, you're fine. <laughs> 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 so he, he saved Saved. Me. He, he he messaged me and and heard my phone beep. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> that beep's <laughs> coming from in here. <laughs> call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong here. Isn't it isn't it amazing how reliant we become on those things? So yeah, so when I got home, I I went to Amazon and, and purchased a bunch of state maps that <laughs> sitting in there. Now gonna, you're gonna you're gonna leave them all at home when you go though. <laughs> I mean, I went like as far as Arizona. I'll probably never drive to Arizona, but I got one just in case. <laughs> you never know. You Can I go see? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, what about New Mexico? Is that before? Arizona? Yeah, yeah, I got one of those too. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll visit David. Gary, I have a I have a road atlas for the United States that I've been storing on my bookshelf, and I've been trying to get rid of stuff. Put it endless. in your car, Aaron. For God's sake, <laughs> save place. yourself. Well, oh, yeah. Put I it in your car. Out. I was going to throw it out, and now that you've told me the story, it's going in the back seat of my car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right next to that roll of toilet paper because you never know. <laughs> atlas. That's what I was trying to think of. What's a Mapsco? What's the difference? Is that just the brand name of Map? Anyway. I, don't know. I think you just made that up. I've never heard that before. No, you've never heard of a Mapsco? No. Oh. Well, an Atlas. Okay, thank you. Road out. That's what we're talking about. It's like, how did we get anywhere before phones? You know? Well, that's our saying. What happens if, if you know, the cell network goes down? Our country is in big trouble. You mean when the uh, Chinese... Uh, However, yeah, <laughs> however it happens. When it that ha down. Were any of you guys in one of those? That just happened recently where like a ton of stuff just went down. Were you guys yeah, in yeah. any of those yeah. areas? No, but I, yeah, I heard about that. But, but I yeah. was like, I was like, man, it's quiet. I'm actually enjoying this. Uh, <laughs> how come no one's called? How come my phone isn't beeping incessantly? Yeah. When Dale A says, if the cell phones go down, we all begin to live again. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. We'll start We'll start farming and, you know, just... I don't have a cell phone. Eating healthy. Yeah, David, look at Good man. Man. He's landline all the way, bro. His wife's got three of them, though. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, David, David is, your, is your vehicle packed with maps? Uh, no, I use the force. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a man. It's called uh, Google uh, Maps before he leaves. Yeah. So. You got you gotta you actually have to go someplace before you actually need a map. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I, I never really I guess I just have good direction. I there's I, there's times where I've I used my cell phone to find where I was going. Uh and I, I love taking back roads, so and and sometimes I'll I'll run out of service or it just won't connect. And I'm, I'm like hopelessly lost. Uh, but then I just start like, I'm like, all right, well, this looks like a good road. We'll see where this goes, you know. <laughs> sure enough, like I always end up in the place I'm supposed to go. Except that one time it kind of took a turn for deliverance. And you're like, mm, man, I think I took the wrong turn. <laughs> Wasn't as bad as you think. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 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 This guy's got a bad rap, man. <laughs> yeah, just that could you be, know. That could, uh, Kelsey, that could be on your your uh, your tombstone. Here lies Kelsey. He always ended up in the place he wanted to go. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, yeah, the graveyard. <laughs> Jesus, he finally made it. <laughs> Destination achieved. I used to be a, a delivery driver and, and before cell phone days. And so you had to know how to read a map. And yeah, maps have become, I mean, even if you have one, how many people know how to read them? I, I still do. Well, it's, I don't always trust my, uh, my GPS either because it, I don't trust them at all. <laughs> Those yeah. things. Where are you taking me? Turn right here. I go, right. I don't think you turn oh, yeah, right I know. I guess you, you, you have to believe that it's taking you the right place. It doesn't show you the, the overall route. There's stories yeah. of people being driven right off a cliff in those things. With the, <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, I was. We got lost with our GPS. Yep. Big time. Dude, all you do is. Happens. You turn it on when you know where you're going just to see where it tells you to go. And you're like, I'm not going that way. Were you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> There's a much faster way and you're arguing with it. I get to yeah. see it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always yell at it because it goes, and 500 feet, turn left. I'm like, yeah, okay, I know, I know. And then it's like, 200 feet, turn left. I know! 100 feet, <laughs> yeah. turn left. I'm doing it! You know, you're just like, oh. I heard you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we got lost, just coming from California to here, it took us to two hours out of our way, or three hours out of our way. And the, the, the GPS kept had this woman's voice, and she kept on saying, turn here. I was like, shut up, stupid biatch. I'm <laughs> 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 I was getting livid. Oh, I know. It's, it's, it's machines, man. I never listen to women. Why am I starting now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking for directions from you or anybody else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Flaw in the design. Let's give them a woman's voice. Hmm. I'm a man. I'll find the way on my own. Yeah, I turn I'm not around. asking for directions. Just I'm I'll pick a direction and go that way. I'll kill you all. Do you hear me? I'll kill you all. <laughs> I'll either end up where I'm going or I'll find a new place to live. Well, <laughs> anytime you ask for directions, girl. <laughs> well, that was that was a thought I had. If I can't get a map, I'll be asking for directions for three hours. Well, the thing is, anytime you ask for directions, right, the guy goes, or whoever's telling you will go, oh, yeah, it's easy. And then they go, you go down here about a half mile, you turn left. Then you get to your second stop sign, you're going to turn right. But then you're going to follow that curve around the bend for about a mile and a half. And then when you get there, there'll be a, a flashing red light. There you want to go straight through. But the next light, you're going to turn left. And by the time, you know, and you're like, what? And then you just go, thank you. Because you got like the first three and then you forgot everything else. You get at least that part and you ask again, you know. When, when you see first. Fred's fruit stand, you take a left. And if yeah. Fred ain't there, you take a right. Uh, when I was a delivery driver, I was, I was delivering some stuff in a rural area. And the directions were all messed up. So I stopped and asked a lady the direction. He said, yeah, go down this road a piece. And then when you get to that big tree, a piece. <laughs> and there's trees everywhere. <laughs> it's farmland. When you get to the big tree, take a right. And I'm thinking, you know, there's a, can only be one tree. tree. Yeah. <laughs> there's trees everywhere. Yeah, but the big tree. Yeah. <laughs> right. As defined by. Oh. <laughs> Ah, the Vespa guy goes, we guys boring me. Uh, the Vespa guy for $5, since he has to smell it all the time, anybody else wonder what the shadow scarf smelled like? Justice? Whatever the <laughs> just, rock is cooking? Just ass. <laughs> Whatever the rock is cooking. Yeah. Corn dogs, perhaps, he said. <laughs> Yeah, it smells like whatever he had earlier for lunch. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what he had for lunch. Yep. Past Master Dan, if you don't see the cow, go back the other way. True story. <laughs> Yeah, if, if you get if you go this far and you haven't seen the cows yet, you've gone too far. You're like, what? Well, I mean, out there in the country, sometimes there is nothing. You know, when you see the house, turn left. What is that? What does that yeah, mean? You get and then the, you realize that's the only house. house. <laughs> <laughs> one house. Oh, you know the house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the old Jeffrey trying to rub it in with his house. Whoa. Oh. 
Well, I was going to say that that kind of like holds true to the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? That there was like that house out there in the middle of Texas, and there was nothing else out there. And that stuff uh, that exists, man. That's <laughs> that Tagamo no Model Works for ten dollars. Thank you so much, Tagamo. He says finally got caught up on all the Greybeards episodes. Wow, that's dedication. Thank you, man. Nice. This show is the perfect blend of art, humor, political incorrectness, and memory loss. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the on. memory loss for yeah. sure. Hey. I'm yeah. gonna say you gotta clarify. Is it you forget the contents of the show immediately, or are you referring to our memory loss? I, I'm pretty sure it's our referring to yeah. our memory loss. Yeah. So either way, it's an insult. <laughs> it's it's just honesty, Gary. It doesn't all have to be a, an insult. Okay, well, that's true. <laughs> if it's the truth. Well, it truth take, hurts. It's not an insult. It did take me a month to remember Mother Goose and Grimm. So, I mean, that's... I thought that was actually pretty good on my part. Only a month. You were you were trying to remember it for a month? What? Well, we did the Calvin and Hobbes episode. And see, so you don't even remember we talked about this. Oh. Uh, we we're doing the Calvin and Hobbes episode. And somebody asked if we had met any, you know... Uh, artists uh cartoonists that did uh syndicated strips oh and yeah i did right. not remember the name of that guy this strip uh, i kept thinking like bed knobs and broomsticks i'm like no that's not it, <laughs> it, was, and it just hit me i was just sitting here in front of the computer and i went mother goose and grim yes that's it <laughs> and uh you know so a month later i and everybody's like, what are you even talking about? I go, you remember that time? That no. 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 <laughs> I finally remembered it anyway. Even nobody else did. This... Well, we do like, we've done so many of these shows at this point. I'm I, I'm truly starting to forget some of the ones that we've done already. Oh, dude, I, I have to go back and look at my portfolio and all my unsold artwork. And go, oh, yeah, that was a Kelsey episode. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've done the shadow uh, like three or four times. Well, least. we did we did pulp characters, but none of us did the shadow. Oh, okay. I, I used him in on the uh, on the placard, you know, for the show, but we no one drew him. It. it was like Doc Savage and uh, uh, this uh, this exact situation reminds me of what my dear old dad used to say. <laughs> what, what do you get out the bathroom, Dan? I get the hell out of the bathroom! You've been there all day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Get a job. Oh, it's like, it reminds me of what your old dad used to say. And he goes, Really? What'd he say? What the hell are you doing in the bathroom day and night? Why don't you get out of there and give somebody else a chance? <laughs> give somebody else a chance. Yeah. I watched um, Bride of Frankenstein and then uh, Son of Frankenstein. And then I watched. Young Frankenstein. I, I I recommend those in, in that order. Ninety percent of Young Frankenstein comes from Son of Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. I did. I didn't realize. Really? That. Yeah, I yeah. didn't realize that until I I had seen it back to back. In fact, um, Basil Rathbone's performance is nearly as manic and over the top as Gene Wilder's is. Yeah, the 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 Burgermeister or the guy with the arm. I mean, yeah. that was, I forgot it well, was in the original movie. Yeah, or oh, I might have to do that little film festival, or uh, what do you call it? Uh, sear, uh, oh, we'll yep. go with film festival, we'll leave yeah. it there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing about that is that what drives me nuts about um, that movie is here I am again complaining, but the, <laughs> we're used the, to it. The end, right? Okay, so he comes back into town, uh, Basil Rathbone, he's like the heir of Frankenstein, right. And he brings the monster back to life. There's chaos and madness and murder and that he's somewhat responsible for. And everybody wants, you know, burn him and run him out of town. And they finally kill the monster. And then he gets on a train and everybody's just like waving goodbye. Like they're all good buddies and see you later. Thanks for coming. <laughs> like, what? Didn't they just hate him like five minutes ago? <clears throat> Short memory. Well, they, they love they love to see him go, I guess. Maybe that's what it was, right? They were all happy to see him go. It's like, oh, thank God he's going. Yeah, no more Frankenstein's, please. I love right. when he when he's taken down. Uh, um, he's taken down to the the crypt, and by uh, what's his name, the Dracula dude. 
Yeah, Don Lugosi. Don Lugosi. He's, he's, like, he's, he's like reading, and, and the, like right next to him, Frankenstein's laying there on a slab. It's like, you don't have peripheral vision. You don't see him, right? Here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, where did he come from? Yeah, yeah. he was like, like, literally, he was right next to him, and he doesn't, he does, he's oh. reading something on a, on a, on a, on a tombstone. Well, he was just cynical. He didn't expect to actually see anything. And then he said, whoa! Yeah, exactly. It's actually really a good movie, but it is funny how his, especially when they're throwing darts in Son of Frank. Yeah, he's, yeah I, yes, I was wondering, is he going to stick the darts in his wooden arm? It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Basil Rathbone was doing practically the same thing as Gene Wilder. He's going, ha, 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 foolishness, you know. <laughs> Just yeah, like, exaggerating. Oh, but, like, now. Yeah, exaggerating the claims and uh, mm -hmm. just so so much stuff in there that that I'd forgotten about. I'm not sure I've ever seen it. I don't even think I've seen the original uh, Frankenstein movie. Are you kidding me? I've seen little clips from it and stuff. The, the Bride, in my opinion, The Bride of Frankenstein is, is much better. Oh, never seen that one either. Oh, really, okay. I mean, that, that's that really holds up. Just just the. The, the lighting alone is, is amazing. Mm. Well, I love I love that that first scene where the monster meets uh, Doctor Pretorius in the in the uh, catacombs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they have they 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 have lunch. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that Karloff did not want the monster to speak, but I really thought it added to it. <laughs> like this. Mm, drink. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> was that from Young Frankenstein? Yeah, no, that was, no, was uh, oh, right. right of Frankenstein. Right of Frankenstein, yeah. <laughs> Did you see uh, Graham's uh, post? But comics, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like this? Bread. Drink. Drink. <laughs> this me at every dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, food. Bread. God. Bread. Drink. God. Yeah. I mean, you start. Yeah, you start liking them there. You forget how many. How many innocent people he's murdered up until that point? Well, you know, he's just misunderstood, Gary. That's Victim of story. circumstance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's not. He's not uh, tending to his uh, carcasses. <laughs> <laughs> his unused carcasses, or what? what is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, oh, 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 uh oh. Hold on. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Rock <laughs> Mulder for 20. Thank you so much. Holy, holy. Very generous of you. Aaron, have you seen the Soviet response to 2001, the 1972 film Solaris? I appreciate both, but realize they're not for everyone. I have heard of it, but I have not seen it. I, I didn't I have seen the film. I've seen the, uh, the remake of Solaris, and I, I've heard that it doesn't hold a candle, the original. So uh, you, can, you can actually watch the original Solaris on, on YouTube. No, but it's like three hours long. Well, so basically, the Soviets were pissed that we beat them to the moon, if in fact we did actually go. And then they uh, then they were pissed that uh, 2001 beat them. Yeah, you were complaining about how slow the spaceships move. I don't even think there's a spaceship in that movie, in uh, Solaris. <laughs> Maybe there is. Well, there might be some you know budget constraints, and the old Soviet Union didn't, you know. I hear it's good though. I want to check it out. I you actually like the uh, the remake. Um, really creepy. When uh, was the Aaron, remake? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Aaron, uh, a little heads up. David's wrapping up, and looks like Kelsey's done. So, um, I, oh yeah, how much? Well, longer? dudes, we still got at least 15 minutes here. I'm I'm just inking. Okay. I'm done. I right. mean, you got at least 15 minutes. <laughs> now, I want to hear more about this Solaris thing. So. Fill us in, Kelsey. Well, the the remake, the one that I saw anyway, because uh, I didn't know that it was a remake 
uh, when I saw it. I was just really into watching uh, movies by uh, uh, Soderbergh, Steven Soderbergh. What did he and, do? Uh, yeah, he did the remake, and it had um, uh, George Clooney in it, but that wasn't like a big selling point. But it what the what's his name? Soderbergh was really trying to work with Clooney to never not do any of his Clooneyisms. Uh, so it's a really different performance for him, um, uh, at the time anyway, but it's all about them going to this or these, uh, he, he gets called out to go to this spaceship that they're investigating this anomaly out in space and there's weird stuff going on. So when he gets there to investigate, like people are locked in their rooms. Uh, there's just all kinds of weird behavior going on. There's like noises going on in rooms that are like locked. So and nobody's telling anybody what's going on. And they're like, so they're just like, you're not gonna understand until it starts happening to you. And so the that night, uh I don't want to spoil it or anything, but loved ones uh uh start appearing, you know, and you're confronted by uh people that have died people that uh, you know were in your past or or whatever just start appearing and I'm, i don't know if that's i'm pretty sure that the original was like that as well but um so it's it's less of a sci-fi even than 2001 i think it's more of like a <laughs> a real human uh, kind of drama now was in 2001 getting back to that uh was almost now complete we started the yeah. <laughs> no, no. was how a f was how really um just randomly failing no. or was he being manipulated by greater powers well if you watch 2010 uh the great film that came out later with roy scheider by the way i, I love that movie john lithgow um it's great i love 2010 a so lot i haven't seen it in ages though so you're gonna have to remind me well lithgow. in 2010 that was the whole conceit is that they that they uh lied to Hal and his like development like they, they got the guy that invented Hal. And like guided him through his his infancy, you know, as a as an AI, and uh, he was supposed to be perfect, you know, he's supposed to be uh, good, but apparently they inserted programming, which was apparently Roy Scheider's character, uh, who's one the one that did it, but they lied to Roy Scheider, I think. Uh, I can't remember the whole thing, but yeah, he was he was uh, implanted with that, uh, you know. I, it's been it's been ages since I've seen it as well, but like yeah, that that was the company, kind of like an aliens, you know, where uh, the that company's always trying to get the aliens so that they can use it or whatever. I don't remember. I just remember Yakov Smirnov in it. Yeah, <laughs> the Russians uh, were great, and I love their spaceship. It was freaking cool. Yeah. And they did this like great like arrow breaking thing where they were gonna save fuel by just like slingshotting around Jupiter at like oh, super yeah. high speed. Yeah. And they had to like the whole ship is like shaking. It was real tense, man. Great whole great scene. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Peter Himes directed that. Yeah, Peter Himes, man. I think he did the screenplay for it as well. And um yeah, I was a big Roy Scheider fan coming off of Jaws and everything he everything he did, I had to go see. He's one of my faves, man. I love yeah, Roy Scheider. Mine too. We talked about him before. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Marathon Man and uh, I don't remember him in Marathon or Man. Sure. He was uh, Dustin Hoffman's brother. Yeah, it was his brother. Oh, yeah, God, he was, it's uh, been he ages was, uh, since I've seen that. Spy. So and, and, in, and uh, Marathon Man and and uh, Sorcerer. French Connection. French Connection too. Yeah, of course, French Connection. Um, was he in Jaws too? Yes, sadly. <laughs> Aaron, yes. <laughs> Blue Thunder, huh? How about that one? Oh, that's a yeah. Yeah, I love Blue Thunder. Can you yeah. name the director of that one? That was um that I, was I a knew, guy. I know I knew it once. It was a guy. <laughs> it was a guy that, that did those films. Go ahead. 
remember. Go ahead. Oh. John Badham. Oh, that's right. John Badham did it. That's right. What a, I lo always love that name. John Badham. Yeah. <laughs> Badham, bad. Well, <laughs> and also in a, in a, in a sort of, uh, cause Roy Scheider sort of after Jaws kind of got, well, and he, I mean, his police detective stuff, their police movies he was in, was always sort of kind of an adventure film guy. And then he turns around and does all that jazz with Bob Fosse. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. That was a great yeah. movie too. Love that movie. Really? You didn't like that movie? Never saw it. Wow. Uh, Aaron. It's about singing and dancing. Was, I ain't going to yeah, watch that. Aaron, that movie was a, a musical. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah, but it was uh, it was Roy Scheider musical. And it wasn't even animated. Can't watch no musical that ain't animated. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to see it because uh, Roy Scheider was in it. And uh, I liked it. He got nominated for Academy Awards. So there. Well, okay. You, you nice put me in my so place. Smart. Let's see what other uh, oh, every movie that you that we mentioned. Well, I just looked up Roy Scheider, and the movies that he listed are Jaws, Jaws Two, Blue Thunder, Fridge Connection, all that jazz, and The Sorcerer are the first ones that popped up. <laughs> Those are all the ones that we just talked about. That's The Sorcerer is the one I have not seen. That you guys are like highly oh. recommending, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And that was Friedkin, right? Did that? It's, yeah. Uh, wasn't he in Fifty Two Pickup? Yes, with Anne Margaret. Oh, I love Anne Margaret. He was in the Family Guy. Well, I'm just <laughs> Roy Scheider. Yeah, apparently. Uh, hold on, I'm I'm looking I up. Uh, seen enough of those to... There's got to be like a hidden gem we're not thinking about. Oh, uh, uh oh, David just won. Oh, he did red. Oh man. Oh well, then I guess I can make his scarf red, right? And then. Uh... He was in a movie. His first movie was in 1951. Shire, really? Yeah, he was in a movie called Love of Life. Oh, it was a TV series. Uh, Man, he must have been young. 51? His first movie that I even recognize mm. is Clute oh. in 1971. Okay. Was he, what and was he? Was he a cop in that too? What was he include? He must have been. And then Fringe Connection. He was he was the cop guy at this time. Canon TV series Assignment Munich. I don't. Oh, I yeah, haven't seen any of that. On a, yeah, guest spot on Canon. And then to Jaws. So yeah, then he had this this trifecta: Jaws, Marathon Man, Sorcerer, like all in one in uh, 75, 76, 77. Yep. He was rolling, oh, baby. John Smith, uh, the seven ups. The seven, seven ups. ups. That seven was a ups, 60s film. Ups. Oh, he's in the Russia house. I didn't know that. I don't remember that. And Naked Lunch. He's in Naked Lunch. I don't remember that. He's in Romeo is Bleeding. What the hell? Roy <laughs> <laughs> Shiner's everywhere. I remember these movies, but I did not remember Roy Scheider in them. <laughs> well, he probably had like, you know, I don't know. Some of these are probably smaller parts, and either at the end of his career, at the beginning of his career, you know. Well, he played in, uh, there's one that he played really kind of against type. I'm trying to see if I can remember that one. It was one of his later ones. Um, well, oh, he was in Daybreak uh, with, uh, oh, no, that's not the one I was thinking of. Never mind. <laughs> while you're while you're looking, uh, Wizard Sleeves already wants to buy David's uh, shadow piece. Yeah, dude, well, let's see what it says first. It might <laughs> apparently David's won already. So Aaron, you you might as well just stop drawing. Oh no! <laughs> oh right, he was in the Punisher. Aaron, you can pull it out. No, you just wait, smart guy. Just wait. Keep talking. I'm just I'm just reading what's in the chat. Mm -hmm. No. Don't kill the messenger. You're selectively reading what's in the chat, you man. True. Okay. Well, I'm scrolling and <laughs> people are talking about David's piece. That's because he put red in it. It's a big cheater. <laughs> yeah. You know, remember, there's a part of this quotient that you guys don't seem to be remembering. And that's gag panel. Oh, I no, I've got the gag coming up. Do you have to put it at the bottom, or do you put it in the? Uh... Oh, I don't know. I just 
I'm just thinking Gary Larson. That's the only thing I can think of with the gag panel. <laughs> well, no, I've got the gag here. I'm just uh, haven't put it in yet. I mean, put the dialogue in. I'm not sure if I was to write it at the bottom or if I'm supposed to give it in a word balloon. Uh, Wizard Sleeves follows up with, my wife just walked in and looked right at me. That's never a good sign. Uh, no, yeah. no, we won't be spending any money on David's artwork. <laughs> they must have heard us talking about women and directions earlier. Uh, <laughs> All right, I am putting lettering in right now. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Paul Taylor says, Aaron's bringing in the female sidekick for sex appeal. Yep. Oh, yeah? Oh, see? Now, Aaron might be the winner if he's got boobs on his. Well, I, yeah, of course I do. Are you kidding me? What is uh, Shadow saying? Dan Panosian sucks? Is that what you said there? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like David wrote. What? A Panosian actually doesn't suck. Panosian doesn't he doesn't at all. He's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> he said David's throwing some shade. That's what he's doing. <laughs> throwing down the shadow gauntlet to Dan Panosian. <laughs> what you got, Dan? I'm I am literally seconds from well minutes from being done. I gotta ink the, uh, <laughs> gotta ink the lettering. So uh, hold on a second, Aaron. Do you have one of these? Could you look at the camera? Skull Nash says no. I Chelsea don't. I want one. That's a Wrightson button. He did the poster too in 1976 for that. Wait, I have I have a couple of these, and when I send you uh, a copy of the art book, I'll I'll stick this in the back. What oh, is it? I didn't get to see it. What is it? Howard Duck. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, it's a Howard the Duck running for president button that Wrightson did in 1976. Yeah, and speaking of cool things. What is that? My my uh, Queen Mickey uh, trading card. Oh, um, word. And it's it comes in this boss case that I can't open. <laughs> but it's magnetized. There we go. Look, at it's magnetized. So you, you put it on the fridge. You can yeah. put it on your fridge. Exactly. It's awesome. You just you ruined the value of it. Oh, that case. case. Did you hear that pushing sound? Of, I broke the seal. I have a, uh, a wizard uh, spawn trading card when spawn came out. I don't know where it's at, though. But it should. it's probably worth money. Maybe I can make some money off of it. Let me see if I can find it. I don't know. There was it's in one of those cases like that. I've got, you know what I've got? I've got some uh, Xena trading cards that are actually signed by some of the actors. Well, that's got to be. Any by Lucy? No, yeah. by Lucy. Oh. Like, like there's okay, a blonde. That's why you said the actors. <laughs> well, well, there, was, there was a blonde chick with the, uh, she was a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, she was, yeah, she was one of the actors. Yeah. <laughs> was, she had huge, uh, you know. Yeah. And uh, acting she the sidekick? No, not the sidekick. She was like a villain. She had oh. a huge, huge uh, acting ability. Yes. Okay. Oh, I need to watch this show. I, I love acting. I love huge acting. I love huge acting. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend that was like obsessed with that show. He huge loved acting. it. Yeah, yeah he, he was obsessed with huge acting. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was ridiculous until I had to actually do the stories and then I started watching and kind of got addicted to it. So <laughs> all right, is everybody done? Because I'm done. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah. I'd like to think everybody else is, you know, done by now. So all right, here we go. Let's see. I, I was barely keeping up with you. I'm glad let's, uh, uh, yeah. let's let's see how the jokes flow. I like that actually you put yours in a box. I sh probably should have done that. I just the panel, the gag panel. No, but I, I figured you know I, if I actually reduced it down, I could like put, a, put it in a box. But anyway, here David, we go. David's getting a lot of love in the chat. We'll see. It's early yet. <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right. Let's see the yucks. So ha 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 ha. And Margo says, you know, we can all see you, right? And he's in his underwear still because he didn't. Uh, 
Two hours, and that's what you got from me. <laughs> there you go. The whistle. He, he has like he has hearts on his door. It's like he was like going casual, you know. You get it? Because he's like, I'm not putting any pants on today. Nobody can see me anyway. And well, that's the most beautifully drawn shadow in his underpants I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> very, very good, folks. Lovingly right, rendered, <laughs> lovingly rendered for uh, your entertainment at home. And there's Margo. But you said Margo. I thought you. I thought you said Anne Margaret. And it's like, that, yeah, that looks like Anne Margaret. Well, it could be Anne Margaret as Margo. Yeah, Margo's got some huge acting going on. <laughs> yeah, <she's> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of acting going on right there. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's uh, that's my. Uh, Top four finish tonight. If we were uh, if we were keeping track of such things, which we clearly are not, um, let's take a look at what David has done. Since everybody seems to be loving it, let's see. The shadow knows. Alec oh. Baldwin sucks. <laughs> I thought oh it said my. Alex Raymond. Dude, that that's like that's not funny. That's harsh. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Is that what they call, wait a minute. Is that what they call black humor? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dark wait humor. Yeah. I that call too. It black humor. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> wow. wow. That's biting. That's biting uh, commentary or political commentary. Right? If you're going to insult it's somebody, do it with a great piece of art. How about yep. that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you can have a lot of people want that. What does he say? The, oh, the shadow knows that Alec Baldwin killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so, see, look who's laughing. I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm laughing sort of uncomfortably. <laughs> wow. Uh, David, I'm I'm digging the limited contour line. Yeah. Oh, that's a great piece. Very edgy. Look at you go, man. Very edgy, yeah. <laughs> you should have drawn Alec Baldwin as the shadow killing a woman. That would only be the way to top it. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I like those like hard edge shadows and stuff. Yeah, mm. that's uh, that's excellent. Um, uh, Tagamo Model Works says he was acquitted. Just so you know, he's going back. Found guilty. Oh yeah. Weren't they yeah. retrying him for something or whatever? Yeah, he was found guilty. Like in a civil court or actually a criminal court? Criminal. Really? So is he doing time or something? I don't know. Something's going down. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Boy, Kelsey. this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> is that guy in his gag panels? Yeah. Well, here's Kelsey. Here's your chance, man. Dude, bring us all up. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Let me see how we can come back from oh, this. So, <laughs> believe it or not, I had a joke similar that I was going to do, but I saw you doing it in the blue pencil. I said, "Forget it." I went, I went for the easy, the easy joke here, of course. But in the, in the, I tried to do it in the, in the form of like a Gary Larson strip where you got rhinoplasty and he's like, "Mr. Cranston," and you see everybody with their big noses <laughs> sitting in the waiting room, and it says, "The shadow's nose." Yeah, <laughs> that, that works. Yeah. That's it. That's that's the one, man. You that's nailed the one. it. A little gag panel. There you go. <laughs> I went for the low hanging fruit, of course. No, oh, but hey, <laughs> shadows yeah, nose. Pulled it off. Quite, <laughs> and the fact that you once again got color on there uh, in this. Uh, uh, I got my Muppet faces going. Uh, <laughs> big noses. <laughs> Mine is ironically funny though. <laughs> yeah, because and, and ironically, you know, he's going around with his PDS saying that Trump was going to kill. You know everybody, but he ended up killing somebody. Yeah. See, so you can we could change this to uh, him saying, "I killed a woman." Yeah, <laughs> we know. I need to change my nose. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And it's turned yeah, into, so there you go. It's turned into a tragic show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Just man. remember, Major Corn Dog is out there. <laughs> uh, don't worry, don't worry, folks. <laughs> Fat Tony says, "Winner by a nose." Uh, definitely passes the sniff test, according to C. Quinn Shilder. Uh Someone wow. put the red on the scarf on yours, Aaron. 
Yeah, I'm going. And the and the red on his uh pan and his um his little his hearts. Walking hearts. shorts on his uh yeah. So his underoos. His underoos, exactly. I don't know. I kind yeah. of feel like uh, mine fell a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I think might have, I was, and in, in my head, it was like, this is funny. And then, you know, I did it, and I'm like, you know, it's it's not that funny. <laughs> it was hilarious. Said, There's no turning back. Well, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've never seen the shadow without his pants, so that yeah, is funny. Well, I mean, come on. You know, there's not something, right? At least, at least we have that going for us, which is nice. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this exciting episode of Grape Beer. <laughs> we promise to have something worth watching next week. <laughs> well, I, it's my turn to pick, and I, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, uh, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, or uh, Disney Animation, or – and when I say Disney Animation, I mean TV. Right, yeah. you know, like uh, Kim Possible and those things. DuckTales. And, yeah, and uh, – or – Tailspin. Or I can take the uh, I can take all the rejects like uh, Star Trek villains and uh, Narnia, and Atari just, Force, Atari. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, on this show, we can never get enough Atari. Force. Damn, Kelsey got one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <clears throat> uh, so uh, there's payback coming for that one. That's right. Uh, but there will be no manga. Almost certainly, there'll be no manga. We'll next do manga time. version of Atari Force and ruin your day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> manga. <laughs> Well, you know, we've got a few weeks till you get to pick again, but I'm waiting. Eventually, I know that that's going to happen. The Atari yeah. Force is going to be a choice. <laughs> so. Anyway, you guys, thank you for the super chats. Thanks for uh, joining us, and uh, we appreciate your attendance. We couldn't do this without your support. Uh, please remember, we all have campaigns. Check out the links in the description of this video. And, uh, you know, be good the rest of the week. Stay safe, and we'll see you right here next week on gray beards studio good night everybody don't be like alec baldwin <laughs> <laughs>